Hi there, in this video we're going to be talking about some of the problems with R squared and why it's not a good measure of how well my econometric model is essentially doing, how well it's fitting the data. So let's think about I have some sort of dependent variable y and I'm trying to explain that using a whole sort of host of independent variables of which the first one is x1. So as sort of a first step at the problem, I include solely x1 in my sort of regression. And let's say that we find that the R squared for this regression is something like 0.65. So what does that mean? That Well, that means that 95% of my variation in y is explained by my x1. Well, let's say we're interested to find out how sort of some other variable also affects um, my, um, well, affects my ability to explain y. So I include that as well in my regression. So let's say I include sort of x2 in my sort of new regression. And from this regression, I find that perhaps the R squared has gone up slightly. So it's now maybe about 0.67. Well, sort of on the face of it, it looks like x2 is helping me to explain some of the variance in y. So it looks like it's a good thing. But the problem with R squared is if I add arbitrarily more variables, so I have some sort of model which is alpha plus beta 1 x1 plus beta 2 x2, all the way continuing up to sort of beta p xp, then if I sort of have as many, um, as many regresses as I do sort of degrees of freedom, then my r squared will actually be 1. And more generally, as I add sort of any more variables to my model, R squared never really decreases. It can stay around the same, but it, but it never decreases. Most of the time it will always increase if you add an extra variable to the model. Whether that extra variable is just complete rubbish or whether it's a significant variable, the R squared will go up in both circumstances. So that's why it's not a very good way of differentiating between different models because perhaps the addition, of, if you were just going on this sort of R squared criteria, then you might accept the second model over the first model even though x2 really hasn't explained that much more of the variance in y um, than I originally had in my first model. So perhaps x2 really isn't significant. This is also quite evident if we use sort of a slightly different example. So now I have some sort of y and, and x and I have some sort of data. So I'm trying to explain my variation in y using my sole independent variable here, x. So as a sort of first step, let's start with the problem here. Perhaps we fit a linear regression to the model, so or to the data rather, and it looks something like that. And so our sort of regression would look something like y is equal to alpha plus beta x or beta one x, yeah, plus some sort of error u. And perhaps the R squared for that regression um, might be something like the R squared is equal to um, maybe 0.5. Um, okay, so then perhaps rather than just including x, we also include the square of x. So now our model looks something like that. And perhaps you could argue that our sort of new model um, with a sort of the x squared term is fitting the data slightly better than my original model. So, and the r squared will almost certainly um, show this. So the r squared might be, let's say, 0.6. So perhaps this sort of x squared model is better on the sort of face of it uh, um, than our sort of linear model. But the problem is, if I add sort of arbitrary many powers until it's actually the case that I have as many sort of powers of x as I do um, data points, so I sort of continue all the way up to beta p um, times x p, um, sorry, times x to the power p, then my model even though it's complete and utter garbage, will go through all of my data points. So we'll actually turn out to have an R squared of 1. So if I was going solely on the basis of R squared, then I would choose this sort of latter model, which essentially fitted my data perfectly. But if I was sort of thinking sensibly, then I hope that you can see that our sort of last model, that very blue squiggly line, is in fact overfitting the data. And I wouldn't really want to rely on it for prediction. So, and I'd be much better off going with either the straight blue line or the sort of mauve line in order to predict y given an x value. So again, we've got this issue with r squared 
doesn't really discriminate as to whether you're fitting the noise or whether you're fitting the data or whether you're fitting the signal rather. R squared always increases no matter what the sort of quality of the extra variable you add to your regression. And I've made a model of this in MATLAB whereby I'm trying to explain a sort of uh, 100 data point uh, Y in terms of sort of some random X variables which I add to the regression. So I sort of start out with only one of these sort of random X variables included in the regression and I'm going to be looking at how R squared varies as I add more of this sort of random noise to the regression. And the sort of horizontal axis here illustrates the sort of number of random variables x which I'm adding to my, to my model. So this is just complete noise being added to my model. And the y value indicates that as I add this just complete rubbish, I get R squared getting closer and closer to 1. So R squared, and I, and I hope you can see that R squared is, I, I don't think it's ever decreasing in this particular run of MATLAB here. Um, so R squared always tends to increase, no matter whether you're adding sort of a high quality variable, which is explaining a lot of your Y, or whether you're just adding complete noise to your um, regression. You can get the MATLAB code for this particular um, this particular program, it's just below the video.